Gears. Off. War. Toshiba, now offering OCZ products that are awesome and affordable like the RD400, TR150 and VT180 that are backed by advanced warranty program, now stronger than ever under Toshiba. So what's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and Gears of War 4 is one very important game to be released with native DX12 support and you know the expectations from the PC community have been high considering it's coming out of Microsoft Studios. And say what you will about the gameplay, but the launch has been extremely smooth with day one uh, drivers, both from Nvidia and AMD performing extremely well and there are no horrendous frame locks like on other day one launches. <clears throat> Mafia 3 for example, and the amount of graphics options we PC users have in the settings is pretty incredible. And we can fine tune how the game looks with a little description on each setting so we know what we're tweaking, plus its impact on CPU and GPU and VRAM. In the advanced tab for video settings, we have two specific DX12 settings, the tiled resources and async compute toggle that lets CPU and GPU work more in harmony together during draw calls and you'll see how they impact performance in just a little bit. And there's also dynamic resolution scaling, which is an interesting setting that lowers the resolution in particular parts of the game to maintain better frame rate, which was disabled during our benchmarking session. So first of all, the game received a patch a little bit after launch that boosts performance about 5-7%, to which is great, as it's already very well optimized. Those on lower end hardware would be fine to play at 60 plus FPS with medium to high settings. And with everything maxed out, Gears of War 4 actually looks pretty damn good. The first few levels are a little bit boring with lighting and gave me a mediocre impression of the graphics itself, but as soon as we get into the darker atmosphere with rain and stuff in the air, it really picks up visually to be quite enjoyable. Yeah, nothing to worry about yet though. Keep your eyes open. Now the gameplay is repetitive, but as you progress through chapters, new enemies are thrown at you and I am playing on the hardcore difficulty to keep things challenging. And to test performance, we've got the full Pascal lineup from NVIDIA with the Titan X all the way up to GTX 1060, along with the RX 480 and the RX 470, all of which perform extremely well at 1080p with all settings maxed out, as you can see. Bumping the resolution to 1440p gives us roughly a 35% less average FPS across the board, but still the middle cards are handling it quite well with acceptable minimums too. And then at 4K, it's very tough on the hardware, even the Titan X struggles to keep up with 60 plus FPS. And so now check this out, with DX12 specific features disabled, we have these frame rates, but then turning them on actually improves performance by a good margin, and we noticed uh, less VRAM usage when tiled resources and async compute are on. Our AMD card gained quite a lot more for the minimum frame rate, while Nvidia cards remained a little bit ahead on the averages. If you're playing Gears, don't be afraid to increase those graphic settings as the game looks better and it's optimized fine for lower end hardware. And also don't forget to enable DX12 features, which really shine for improved frame rate on the cards we tested. I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks. Thanks for watching. Let us know what games you'd like tested in the comments down below and we'll see you in the next video.